So you've now learned through the previous tutorial how to find your material libraries and how to set materials, but it's not always that simple. You might have a material that isn't in the library or you might have a material that you're just not sure about. So this tutorial will teach you how to do a material test within Xtool Studio. It is in a different position than Xtool Creative Space. I'm gonna go through the whole process of how to set up the test, how to run the test, and then how to actually interpret the results of the test and then feed those results into your material settings and save your own custom material settings off of it. So let's get to it and I'll show you exactly how to do it. We are on our familiar screen again. This is the new Xtool Studio homepage. And the aim of today is for me to teach you how to run a material test on an unknown material. In this case, I have got a 3D printed black PLA piece. There is no setting in the library for this. So I'm gonna show you the exact process I will go through to find the optimum settings for this. And you can apply that technique to everything. So that is the aim of this. I'm gonna put it onto the engraving bed and we will be doing it live during this as well. So we're gonna click new project in the top right. That is where we always start. You hear my machine beep. I'm not gonna show the, the image on the background because I wanna run this tutorial so it will work with any machine. And sometimes if you're running an F1 or a machine that doesn't have a camera, you might be put off thinking, oh, this isn't for me. This is for anyone who uses this software. So. The first thing we want to do, okay, is we want to find or think of a similar material. So that is black PLA, which is a plastic. It's a plastic material. So I'm going to go to plastic. And the first thing we want to do, if you've got a material, just find something similar to it, okay? This is just going to give us a rough area, a rough ballpark of where we need to go. In this case, acrylic is similar. It's a similar material. Obviously, it's a totally different material, but I think I can use acrylic settings to at least give me an idea of where I wanna be, okay? The next thing we wanna do, all right, to make a material test, and remember the purpose of a material test is to find the optimum settings. We're gonna do lots of different grid testings of power and speed ratios. We need to create a shape that's gonna be our testing shape. So over here on the left side, you are gonna see the shape column. I'm gonna use a star in this case because star is quite a complex shape. It's complex in the sense of it, it, you know, it's forced to go long on long and short paths. So it's a good test of it. And size wise, obviously whatever material you're gonna be testing on will dictate the size of this. Generally, I end up going for something like for between five and 10 millimeters by five and 10 millimeters. I think that's a safe bet. It gives you enough to work with. And there you go. So what we're gonna do now, okay. So we set our material at the start as our um, acrylic. You can see it's there in the top right. What we're gonna do now is we are gonna change our shape to engrave. And you're gonna see the default settings it gives me is 40% power, 1,500 speed. That's important because we're gonna use this as a reference when we set up our material test. So we've got our shape. This is what we need to run our material test. Over here on the left, it's, it looks very similar like it did to XCS for this one. So you're gonna see these four shapes. Click on that. And there are lots of new things in here, but one of the things you will see is material test array. That is what we're gonna do to determine our optimum setting. So you're gonna click on it with your shape selected. And now you'll see it's automatically generated the shape in the middle and you'll see speed on the left, power on the right. And that's what it asks us to set. And by default, it will set 10% minimum power, 100% maximum power, and 10% minimum speed, 1,000 millimeters a second maximum speed. And if we go back to the right now, this was what it was recommending for acrylic, which is a similar, it's a plastic. So if you think it's telling us 40% power, the fact that this would put us in at 100% power would probably mean it'd be too much and it might melt the material. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our reference material, which isn't exact, just gives us a ballpark, and we are gonna, so for, it's, it's recommending 40% power, 1,500 speed. I'm gonna put that in the middle of my power and speed. So I am gonna go 60, no, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go 50% maximum power, 10% minimum power. You know what, I'm gonna go 60, just so there's a bit of variability. So we've gone 20, we've gone 40 is the optimum, we've gone for 50 and 60, and we've also gone starting at 10%. So. On the left now, you're gonna see if I click off of it, 
uh, on the power here, you're going to see 10, 23, 35, 48, and 60. If we actually change it down to 50, that's better. Well, I'm going to try and keep the numbers round here. So we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. That will help us. On the speed front, it was recommending 1,500 millimeters a second. So I'm going to do a maximum of, let's try 3,000, minimum of 1,000. And there you go. It goes up in increments of 500 speed. So that hopefully will give us a rough area or a rough um, ballpark and give us what we need. We can always refine and do this again after and after. And it's always worth doing this when you get a new piece of material. So what you can also adjust here, look, is you can, you can increase the columns. So if you put it up to seven, for example, it's now increased the range of power and speed it's testing, which is good for accuracy. For simplicity though, in this one, I'm gonna keep it on five because it gives us round numbers on the power and the speed. And then spacing allows you to make the shapes closer. If you're working with a really tight, small piece of material, you might actually wanna keep it as close as possible to allow it to, to, to get as much information on that as possible. So I'm going for two by two. And as you can see there, that's good. Once you're happy with what you've got, you're gonna click done. And you'll see you've now got a grouped shape. One thing I want to tell you guys to do at this point, though, and this is this is a, another thing that's worth checking, is to right, so click on your grouped object, right click it, and then click on ungroup. And the reason, now we can select all the individual things. And if you, what I will show you, look, look over to the right here, the power and speed. I'm going to click through these various ones, and you'll see each of them has now been given an individual power and speed ratio which aligns with what we've done. What we want to check in this case, though, is the actual text around the outside of it. If I click on that, it's recommending 90% power, 1,200 speed. I suspect that could burn the material, okay? So always check this to make sure you know what settings it's giving you for the text. I don't want it to be that powerful, so I'm going to put it down to 40%, and I might go for 1,000 speed. So I would, I, what I will, and what I tend to do actually, and this is a good tip for you guys, is select all of the text, which I've just done. You can do that by se selecting one and hold shift and individually select all the others, or you can hold, draw a box, hold shift, draw another box, and then select that one. There you go, right click, and then we're gonna just set it to a different layer. This is a red layer, because it now means we can set different settings for those, and. What I mean by that is if I do, if I change these settings now to 40% power, 1,000 speed, that's what we're going to do. You'll see if I click on blue, it goes to various. It's all mixed. If I click on red now, it selects all of those things. And on the right, look, it's all the same. So if we want to change the settings of that all together, we can do it now. So once you've got it all together, you can group it back or you can keep it ungrouped. It's up to you. But at this point, we are now ready to run the test and to see how it goes. And we will do that. So I always say, make sure you focus your laser so the two dots are joined together. And in my case, I still need to do that. And I will do that. You're going to see that. And then we're going to frame the item to make sure it's framed and it fits. Okay, critical. You don't want to do this test unless it's on the material. Once we've framed it, we are then going to actually do it. So let's switch over to that and I'll... I'll show you the live test and then we'll go for the results after and I'll help you select it. So as I said, the first thing we want to do is focus the laser. You can see I've got a blue and a red dot and they're, they're not joined up at the moment. So I'm going to use the arrows on this. You can use the knob if you've got an F1 though and whatever else to join them up. That is now telling me that everything is aligned, which is what we want. We want the laser focus so that when we do the material test, we're getting true readings of these results. You can see here, I am framing the item and the camera is picking up, it's showing all the individual stars. I know that's in a good position now, so I'm happy to start. And what I will say is I am wearing safety glasses, so I will be keeping the shield up. However, if you want to do this, I would close the lid or make sure you are wearing safety glasses. So there you have it. Here is our material test. And as you can see, we've gone, we've, we've got it pretty good here because the bottom right is dark, but all the rest of them are very similar. So 
What you can do now is you can take this material test and you can try and optimize it so that you're using as little power as possible but getting the maximum speed. As you can see, we changed the text and I'm really glad we did because it came out nice as well, but I fear it would have burnt it. I mean, look at the 50% power down there, that, that almost burnt it. So looking at this, I would choose probably 20% power, 3000 speed, or maybe 30% power, 3000 speed. So one of those top rows, absolutely brilliant. And what we can do if we really want, we can do another material test and increase the speeds, maybe go to four or 5,000, keep the power the same, and we can then look at it in greater detail and try and refine this even more. So there you have it. I'll show you close up our settings again. So now we look at this, as I said, I like the look of probably looking at it close now, I would say 20% power, 3000 speed. That was a really low power, high speed engraving that gives us a really good balance. So I've shown you in a previous video what, how to make your own custom materials, but I'm going to show it in this one really quickly because you know we've it's, it's all good showing you how to do the test, but you might not know what to do it after. So what we're going to do now is I am going to ungroup this again. And we're going to select the one that we liked. And that was this one here, look, 20% power, 3,000% speed. And over here, you'll see it's currently telling it's, it's kind of the material, but we don't want that one. We want to set our own one up here. So I'm going to click on this little kind of save button here, and it's going to bring up uh, add material setting. I'm going to put um, bamboo PLA black because that's what it was, bamboo material. It was a bamboo brand. It was a PLA is the material and it's black. We're gonna click Submit and there you go. We have now got saved in there, bamboo PLA black. So if I deleted that, all out of there, and then I created a new shape and I'm gonna go for a jazzy vector one. I'm gonna do a lesson on this, by the way. So check out the channel if you do wanna learn this one. We're gonna click engrave, and then if you go here and click on Bamboo PLA Black, it has optimized and selected our settings, and we are good to go. That is how you do your own material settings, guys. If this has been helpful to you, please subscribe to the channel, please like the, ch the page, and also check out that Facebook group because we do a lot of sharing in there. We share materials, tips, and we're really helpful. So thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next tutorial.